Welcome back to John's Films. Coast to Coast Run 2019 is a YouTuber who watched one of my videos, right up above, on object removal using the Neural Engine. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, and it's because his clip has this really quick, almost like a, a boom mic dropping into it. And so he's asking me, how do I get rid of it? Well, great news, he sent it over to me, so let's jump through it and see what we can do. One other quick note here. There's an intro coming up here. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Saad Shah over at Gargoyles at Work created for me this week, and I think it is pretty darn sweet. So let me know what you think. All right, let's get to it. And here we are with the 95-year-old walking through Louisiana. He's already made it from Florida all the way across to Louisiana. This appears to be an I-10 bridge. Uh, this one's the one that goes over the swamp for seven or eight miles, if I had to guess. But let's see what the problem is. You've got in this clip right here what looks like a boom mic almost coming in, but it's actually the case on the 360-degree camera. And we need to make sure that that comes out of the footage and isn't really detectable as we do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate this part of the clip that I want to remove by hitting B and using the blade tool to select and cut that footage into just a few frames here that have the problem. Now I'm going to right click on that small selection and I'm gonna choose no fusion clip, or new fusion clip. Here I'm now able to jump into fusion on that and get that clip to show up. Let's take a look at this. I cut out 24 frames and out of those 24 frames, starting right here at frame five, it dips into my scene and it goes out around frame 16. So I've got about 10 frames to paint. Because this is moving around, and because it's here for so short, I think the AI in the object removal node in your color page just isn't going to work. So what do we do? I'll click on Media In and hit Shift Spacebar. Now this allows me to pull up my Select tool. I'll type PA, and there's the Paint tool, so I hit Enter. And that adds a Paint node directly into my node graph. Now the Paint node has some controls over here. The brush controls control exactly how large I'm going to be using with my paintbrush. If I were to select and just start painting, you can see I can paint any color I want. That's not really what I want, is it? Nope. I'm going to use the apply mode control of clone. This allows me to select, much like the stamp in Photoshop, select an area that I will then use to as a reference and source for painting over the rest of the image. The last control we should look at is the stroke duration. In this case, I'm going to leave it at 1 because it moves around quite a bit. Now, I will zoom in directly where I want to make the change. Here we go. And I make sure my paint node is selected down in the node tree. I've got media out set as the visible node on this viewer. And I've got paint here selected. So I will, now that I have my paint mode set to clone and I've got my paint node selected, I'll hold down the Alt key and left click once. That sets a selection area, and it will use this as a source. Now I'm going to use that source to paint over with the left mouse button. Now, our primary objective here is to do as little as possible to each of these frames. Here's my frame. I'm going to jump ahead to frame six, and you'll notice, well, it's right back. So let's select again. As little as possible is the name of the game, so that we don't have it show up on us later um, as looking funky. You'll notice I'm also trying to keep very horizontal, because this is a vertical gradient move coming down, and you'll see there's a little splotch there, but we can fix that in a minute. I want the same color and the same texture to be in my footage as I paint over. So, I make sure to try and select. Now here you'll see what I did. I selected from near the top, but then my mouse when I started painting was a little lower than the selection. And that meant that when I went up towards the edge of the screen, there was no source for it to draw from. And so it didn't have anything to draw. Here's another likely error that you might make. I selected a spot that was so close to my object that when I got to the right side of that object, it was sourcing from the object because it sources from the base footage, not from the stuff you've overpainted with. 
So come back and do it with the source selection just a little further away, and now it works. 10, Alt, click, paint. There we go, I did it again. So I'll Alt, click here. And I'm intentionally kind of leaving a little bit of a splotch there because I want to show you a trick you can use to clean it up when you get done. It's also faster than having to really worry about it. But if you do follow those general rules of selecting the same gradient band and doing as little as possible, you should come out of this pretty well. The other thing you can do if it gets too splotchy is alter your softness on the right. That's your feather, and that's that determines how harsh the edges are on your painting. Depending on your footage, you may really want to use that to clean up some of the look. Here we go again. Got too close and went too low, so I went and ran off the edge. I didn't have anything to source from. Here we go. 16 is clear, and now we've got what looks like a little flickery up there, but it is removed. Got to give it credit for that. So that's not ideal. I'm going to jump over to my color tab. This is where it gets pretty interesting. I can use my mask here at the top to select the area that I've done my painting in. The next thing I'm going to do is grab the deflicker out of Resolve's OpenFX Resolve FX Revival. Drop that on top. And I'm going to choose Fluoro Lights. This is meant to, to solve banding that happens as it goes through with the phasing of the speed of the light versus the speed of your shutter. But in this case, I think you'll see it works pretty darn well um, in that it removes all of the flicker that was showing up after my painting. So now we've got a pretty darn perfect removal of that camera case that was showing up in there. So this is a way you can do this other than the object removal for when that tool fails. Well, as we saw, the paint tool can be extremely useful. It's, um, it's something fun to play with, and if you like the paint tool, I'd suggest you jump over to CB Super, which is a channel here on YouTube who does very short fusion tutorials, and he's got a ton on paint. So go check it out. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.